Good morning, and welcome to Evangel Online. Ever watched a foot race at the Olympics? Maybe the 10,000 meter? One of the things that's always intrigued me is that you got to get to the arena, to the stadium, in order to run, you got to get to the starting line in order to run the race. That That's, that's part of the preparation. You have to get there. You don't just magically appear at the line and boom goes the gun and off they go running. There's a lot of work and effort that goes into getting to the starting line. And one of the things for believers in our race, living our lives the way Jesus wants us to, one of the things we have to do to get to the starting line is cross boundaries. Have you ever reached out of your comfort zone when it comes to meeting new people? I personally find it difficult to talk to people I don't know. I'd rather speak in front of a thousand people in a crowded room than have to make conversation with a new person. It's, it's the way I'm wired. I've gotten better at it. I work hard at it, but it's not easy for me. Crossing social boundaries is hard. We naturally want to gravitate to people that we already know. And if we don't know them, we really want to be comfortable with them. So they should look like us and act like us, think like us. And we just find it easier to connect with people who are like us. It takes effort to connect with people who aren't like us. That's why most people never break out of their social groups and circles. They gravitate to people who are like them, have similar experiences and similar backgrounds. Because crossing boundaries is hard. However, as Christ followers, we have to be prepared to cross social boundaries. Because, quite frankly, it's always been expected of us. Every major character in the New Testament was asked of God to go and connect with people that were out of their comfort zone. Just look at the disciples. They were average Joes. Everyday common people who got sent to the whole world. One minute Peter is fishing at the Sea of Galilee and the next thing you know, God's calling them to travel all over the known world and to, help to look after churches and and. Thomas and Andrew and Nathaniel, all of these guys, they were just normal people like you and me. And God says to them, here's the calling that I'm placing on you. Put aside your nets, your tools, your rakes, your hoes, and go all over my creation. Turn it upside down for me. Let's take a look at one time in particular. Acts chapter 10. It's the famous story of Peter being on the roof of the Tanner's house in Yapa, and he's just about lunchtime, and he's been praying, and he's hungry, and God gives him a vision of this sheet coming down from heaven full of all these animals, and God says, Peter, you're hungry. Go go get one of these and eat it. And Peter says, oh, Lord, they're, they're all unclean. I've never touched anything unclean. I, and, and it happens three times, and each time God says, what I've made clean, don't you call unclean. And then, just as the vision is finishing, these men show up from Cornelius' house, a Roman, a God-fearer, but not a Jew, who has heard in a dream from God that he needs to go to Yapa and find Peter, who will explain what he should do. So here's God putting together these two people. Peter, the Jewish fisherman, Cornelius, the Roman citizen. And Peter goes with them because he's had the vision. He walks through the front door and the very first thing he says is, surely you know that it's against my law to even associate with you. I don't know, Peter. Not exactly the most... Uh, welcoming thing to say when you walk into somebody's house. But that's the way it was. So 
So you can read about this in Acts chapter 10, verses 22 to 33. One of the first things that we learn here is that Peter was willing to go where he hadn't even considered going before. It took a vision from God to convince Peter that this was a good idea. God needed to tell him three times before the men even arrived. This is so, such a big thing. And in many ways, this interaction is the real birthplace of the church as we know it. Up until this point, all the, the believers have been Jews. It, it was a subsect of Judaism that was happening here. And now with Cornelius, Gentiles are invited in. While he was speaking, the Holy Spirit came upon the household, and they all began to speak in tongues. And Peter says, they've received the same gift that we have. Is there any reason why they can't be baptized and welcomed into the church? They're believers just like us. And the centurion's, and the Cornelius' faith and his household's faith becomes a faith for the whole world. Peter is willing to go where he couldn't have possibly fathomed going before. And he was willing to speak about what he had experienced, verse 33 to 43. Peter doesn't preach a sermon here. There aren't three points. There are no illustrations, no introduction, no conclusion. He just tells Cornelius and his household what happened to him. You know, sometimes I get hung up on... What would I say if I actually tried to tell someone about Jesus? What would, what would I say to them? What, the, the, the three, four spiritual laws, the Roman road, what, what would I do? How about you and I just tell people what God has done for us? What Jesus means to you and me? What difference does having Jesus in our life make? Just tell our own experience. That's what, Paul, what Peter's doing here. Be prepared to do that if you're asked. And I guarantee if you're prepared, you will be asked. Think of it this way. Can you tell your testimony in 40 seconds? If someone asked, can you boil your testimony down to one sentence? This is who I was before Jesus and this is who I am now. And then if they want to hear more, can you do it in four minutes? A paragraph. And if they want more, then you can give them the whole essay. This is my life story, pal. I'm going to tell you everything I know. But be prepared. That's getting to the starting line before the gun is fired. And number three, let God worry about the results. Verses 47 to 48. Peter didn't even get to finish what he was saying. While he was speaking, the Holy Spirit came upon the household, and they all began to speak in tongues. And Peter goes, well, they've received the same gift that we have. So what's to stop them from being baptized and welcomed into the church? They're believers, just like us. Peter took the step of obedience, told his story, and God did the rest. You and I can do the same thing. So, now what? Can I ask you to do one thing? One thing with me right now. Just take a moment. And ask the Holy Spirit. What boundary crossing relationship does he want you to start? Go ahead, do it right now. When you did that, did God put a person in your mind, a group of people? If he did, then that's your call. Just like Peter was called to Cornelius' house. That's your call to your Cornelius' house. 
And I pray that you make the effort. You cross that boundary. Tell the story of your experience. And let God.